Ted DiBiase, the Million Dollar Man, and you're watching Comic Trips. And if you want to get your money's worth, stay right here because everybody's got a price for the Million Dollar Man. <laughs> Growing up doesn't mean forgetting the things that you loved as a kid. Take us, for instance. We're a couple of 80s babies who've traveled thousands of miles looking for memories in the form of comic books, collectible toys, and anything that brings up a good old-fashioned nostalgic feeling. We've met many new people, we've seen interesting new places, and we've made countless new memories in the process. Individually, we're known as Cat and Paul, but with our powers combined, we become Comic Trips, and we're inviting you along with us for our journey of pop culture exploration. I don't know about you guys, but autumn here in Jersey is so beautiful. It's like that crisp air, and it like smells like the leaves. It just reminds me of the first day of school. I don't know why. I walk outside in the morning, I'm just, ah, uh, yes. Yeah. I'm going to get bullied. <sighs> oh, dude. We have the day off. It's a Sunday. Sunday fun day? Is this going to be a Sunday fun day? I think, well, I mean, it might be a Sunday fun day if we ever actually get there because this traffic kind of sucks. So we're driving through Philly, through the, like, the outskirts of Philly here. This road is notorious for having tons of traffic. We're on 76 West. Every year, there's a con that comes through Oaks, PA called RetroCon. I had been to it once. It was awesome. I was there two years ago, RetroCon 2014. Because it was right when we started talking. Yeah, I think I invited you, right? You did. But you had to like work or yeah. you had something going on where you couldn't come, so. Right. So we're never able, we've never been able to make this convention together because it always falls on the same weekend as Seafood Fest. Paul and I cannot, like that's his job. He puts on Seafood Fest. So there's no getting out of it. But this year, the RetroCon gods were with us, and it fell two weeks after Seafood Fest. Which means that that's where we're going today. New, new, new! RetroCon, finally going to RetroCon together. I'm so excited. That was actually, remember there was a plan last year where we were gonna try and get a table at RetroCon for the weekend to promote the channel in 2015. Then we found out. Seafood Fest. We found out the dates of Seafood Fest after RetroCon was announced, so unfortunately we couldn't do it. We have countless friends who go to this event over the weekend, a bunch of friends who are vending at the event for the weekend. There was about a year and a half or so that I, moved away from New Jersey, I lived outside of Philadelphia, and one of the spots that I lived was actually the next exit right past the Oaks Expo Center exit. I lived in Collegeville. It's a cool area, nice suburban, quiet spot, and Oaks Expo Center is pretty impressive with their size. I remember RetroCon being just rows and rows of retro toys, video games. I don't remember it being very comic heavy, I don't, I wanna, I wanna say that wasn't the forte of this event. The last time I went, they had Sergeant Slaughter there. I did see an advertisement that the man who voiced Krang on the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles animated series, Jeff Noyes recently grabbed 99% of the original 1990 to 94 Hasbro WWF toys, a little spring-loaded guys. Paul grabs me the Series 4 Undertaker from Noise toys for my birthday, and then you think you grabbed a few Hogan's. I grabbed series two, three, four of Hogan in that old run from like 1991 to like 1992. I want to see this collection up close and personal. I think he still has Moonbelly, Moonbelly Kamala. I got to see the Moonbelly Kamala in I'm person. I'm almost positive that he still has it there because. Um, I think I, I think I saw it on an Instagram post, so I'm excited. I mean, it, like I said, there's a little bit of traffic, but to be expected. I mean, this is just how it is out here. When I when I was in training to be a stuntman, I was living out this way, driving in here, and it was never not like this. You drove this like weekly. All the time. Ugh. When I lived out here, oh yeah, there was no choice. Because remember, I was also coming back home down towards Atlantic City to see my family and friends and everybody. Very rarely is there ever not traffic. Yeah, I can see how this road would create serial killers. Awesome views. Very cool views, yeah. yeah. I have my sights set on some wrestling figures I'd like to add to my collection. I'm starting to get a little Undertaker heavy, not gonna lie. Honestly, I'm having a tough time kind of like setting my sights specifically on 
anything for this trip because I know that there is going to be such a wide array of not only retro stuff, vintage stuff, but also custom things that people make at these types of shows. So I'll have to keep my eyes open and we'll see. I can respect that. T today's kind of a <sighs> crapshoot. Let's see what we get. Yeah, let's see what we get. Maybe some Power Rangers. Maybe some Ninja Turtles. Maybe. Maybe some wrestlers. I don't know, maybe. Maybe. Okay. Maybe we'll come back with some stickers. Maybe, maybe some stickers. Got some friends doing stickers there. I don't know. We shall see. We shall see. My cousin's there. Yeah. Yeah, my oh, cousin okay. is set up. He always has a weird array of stuff. Very unique setup. Unique. That was a fart. You just farted on camera for the first time in a really you long know, time. I was like holding it in and I realized if I didn't let it go, I was gonna be incredibly ill. All right, onward to Oaks. I'm gonna roll the windows down. incredible stuff from Zombie Sailor. He also has an Instagram it. account. Yep. It's pretty solid at Instagram Zombie account. And a website now, right? A website that I never update. That's okay. You have a website. Hey, what's up guys? This is Michael. I'm the weird kid at school on Instagram and Twitter. I'm cousins with Kat. Uh, it's, uh, it's a benefit, I must say. But this is my whole table here. And I've got a lot of weird bootlegs, a lot of weird toys that were on the market, like this Punisher right here, and uh, some other fun things. Check them out. I sell toys to children. I sell toys to adults. This is Nightmare Fetty. He annoys you when you sleep. All right, so Jeff Noyes recently acquired like over 90% of the 1990 to 94 Hasbro run. So I think I want to go, want to go talk to him about it. Want to go ask him? Yeah, we should ask him about it. Five bucks. Oh, oh my God. God. Oh, man, guys, it's me. That's yeah. such a good find. Zombie Sailor, man. Josh is awesome. Nice. I love color forms. Give me like a quick rundown of how, how did this all happen with getting like 99% of the original Hasbro run, including the two hardest ones to get, right? I, I, that's yeah. a, that there's a tip, like there yes. are no others that are more rare, yeah. right? Right. The only other piece that would be more rare, uh, still like not even like 
It's not as rare as that, and it's probably on the same level as that. The only other piece would be the yellow King of the Ring. Okay. Which that was a Sears mail order. Of course it was a mail order. And, missed, and unfortunately, the, the piece that it was actually pictured in the lot, mm -hmm. and then he was like, yeah, I don't have it. I was like, oh my god. And how many of these are supposedly exist? 24. Rumored to be 24. Rumored Maybe at the most, 24. 24. Yeah. At the, uh, that's the highest number I ever heard. A lot of people tell me 10. I have not even seen 10, like, posted anywhere. You know, because I keep on like looking and looking and looking, and that's the most that I've seen. Some of the figures that you have here, what's that, Series 2? They look Macho like they came Man. out of boxes, like shipping boxes. These are yeah. beautiful. Case fresh, they're yeah. incredible. And the thing is, too, with these ones is, well, that's a, they did a Macho King, right? which is the same figure as that, right? but on his butt, on his trunks, right. it'll say Macho Man. Okay. So there's that, and also the ones that were circulated in stores, right. they had usually French or Italian cards. Right, right. official. Yes, yeah, right, exactly, right, right, exactly. Right, right. But this one is actually the U.S. card. Wow, that's funny. And the same thing with the Coco Beware. That was another one that was very, very, very short printed on the U.S. card. And then, I mean, the, the other one, the SummerSlam card, Dusty Rhodes, yes. which that's a massive selling point right there, having the little SummerSlam corner bop on it there. What other figures have the, the tags SummerSlam? inside, too? Yeah, the tags inside. Uh, I have another one inside. It was uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Hacksaw, that's it. So it those wasn't are... as rare, but um, the Dusty was incredibly short printed. This dude had the find of a lifetime. Good things happen to good people when you bust your ass like crazy. I think we're probably going to have to maybe get a week. Am I allowed to get a couple figures? Do we have the budget? <laughs> so we might be getting a couple Series 1 figures from you just to kind of ramp up our collection a little bit because it's kind of bleeding over. Fair it was just, let me get all the Hogan stuff I can. Now it's like, oh, let me get all the original Hasbro stuff. That Look what you've so done. Start off from it's series all... to series. Look what you did, you, you little jerk. Yeah. I come across this stuff, you see it, and I was like, I need it. I need it. <laughs> well, good things happen to good people, man. Thank you guys, guys very much. Seriously, Thank you. awesome stuff. I appreciate it. Uh, Station's first RetroCon. Yeah. How's it going? Indeed. Retro Squared. Yeah. You enjoying the weekend? So far, so good. Yeah. It was busy having some fun and joking around and commiserating with the other knuckleheads. It's a lot of work. I'm tired. I'm tired. <laughs> no work, no reward, though. Correct. Well said. Cool.
started, uh, I got the plotter in January. We really started, our first job was in April, the end of April. And then our first big thing we did was uh, Free Comic Book Day at the Maze Landing in Hamilton Mall. Once we did that, we made some money off of it, and it was really nice. So it was like, geez, we really should be doing this more often. And we just said, well, why not like do what I was doing before, try to see if we can turn it so into he something. He has a lot of, he's a lot of experience plotting everything and cutting it out. I do a lot of the work on the computer to make the images for everybody. What, like fixing the comic trips? Yes. Icon, so it's not a piece of crap. Yeah. <laughs> I remade that whole one. And it's been a good weekend. Everybody's really nice. Everybody's pretty like receptive to everything. Yeah. So we've a lot of people taking cars. We might be doing work for some people. That yeah, we've have got a bunch of people who are interested here. in doing like bulk orders for their, mm -hmm. you know, of their logos for their uh, companies. Yeah. I know one person who did that. Comic trips. <laughs> I think we're gonna kick it old school style. Uh, we're gonna sit in the car and show you our haul. I haven't done that in a while. No, we haven't done that in like three seasons. I know. Well, I mean the RV, technically. Right, but I mean like this, where we were like, hey, you know, this yeah, feels good. Yeah, like this. This feels good this doing feels this. Good. This feels good doing this. I don't know, I'm jazzed. You know why? Because we had a f awesome haul yeah. at RetroCon. It took a little convincing to get Paul here to RetroCon. A, because we're broke, and B, just some sh I just remember being really wrestling heavy, so I really wanted him to get here. And it's funny that it ended up being the timing that it is because Jeff Noyes from Noyes Toys got that incredible Hasbro, what was it, 97% of them? Of the original 1990 to 94 Hasbro run, he got 99% of the figures, including the SummerSlam Dusty Rhodes and the Moonbelly Kamala, which are impossible to get. Super duper rare. Yeah. So it worked out that he had just gotten that collection and had it displayed at RetroCon, but we're gonna save the best for last. So we're not actually gonna show you that yet. The first thing we grabbed while we were there we saw Zombie Sailor's Toys was set up. Uh, we'll link you his Instagram and his website below in the description. We found the Hogan color form set, sparkle art. This is like the, uh, you get the picture and then you get like little uh, self-adhesive sparkle squares and stuff like that. Then you match the color on the square to the one on the actual design. And it, you know, it's utterly ridiculous 90s stuff. But this right here screams my childhood. This came out when I was eight years old. I messed with color forms pretty hard. My mom, she was just like, these are awesome. I will yep. buy her all of the sets. Five dollars, you Gave guys. Gave it to us for five bucks. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. So this is, this was my, woo -hoo! What was that? <laughs> when we were in California with Katie and James, the Enzo and Cass Mattel set, the double, the, the dual pack. Their had, first in the line. First in the lines had just dropped. The booth that we were at where Paul got the giant size Hogan, he wanted 50, 55? I wanna say it was $55, he wanted yes. $55 for it. And it was fresh in the day and I was like, okay, put a pin in it, possibly. A couple days ago we went to Wrestling Universe in Flushing, New York and they had this set there and the guy wanted $69.95 for it. So basically he wanted 70 bucks for it. This was like, you know, they know what they have, so they're gonna yeah, price accordingly. It's on the higher end, they're in a big city, and there's not any other places around that have it. No, and Enzo and Cass right now are pretty much at the top. If it's not New Day, it's definitely, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> How you doing? So I'm walking by this booth, and I see it. And you guys, look at that price sticker right there. It's $40, and the card is not bent anywhere. I freaked out a little bit. I'm very happy that you found this, because this right here proves that the first time you see something is always usually like a really good time to get it because you don't necessarily know if you're ever gonna find it again. But with this being a newer toy, you're gonna find it. It's just a matter of who has the best deal on it. And luckily, with a show like this where you have a lot of vendors who are selling similar things, prices are gonna end up being competitive. You get A plus for oh, today. Yay! Yeah. I did, I got an A plus. Yep. Yeah. Paul had a moment today. I did. So Ted DiBiase, the Million Dollar Man, was guest starring RetroCon. Paul was like, oh my God, do you think I could get him to cut us a quick promo? And I was like, well, it doesn't hurt to ask, but I can't be there to watch it go down. Um, I have a fear of rejection and watching it happen. Me too. So we went up to Ted DiBiase and something in my heart told me to just go with him and support him. We walk up to Ted DiBiase and he ends up 
chatting with us for like 15, 20 minutes, like just telling us stories and talking about uh, wrestling themed weddings that he's been at and all this other great stuff. And then Paul was like, okay, I know it's not on your list of like, uh, you know, things you're selling as in like photos or autographs or your book, but do you think you could cut us a quick promo? You know, here's our channel name, here's what we do, and he did it. He cut it for us. So you saw it in the beginning of the episode. Paul was fanboying. He absolutely was fanboying. There was a couple moments where I'm like, I put my hand on his shoulder like. This era of WWF means the absolute world to me from like, and he said it exactly, WrestleMania 3 to WrestleMania 10, which is like one of my like normal like sayings that I tell people is that like, it's such an impressionable era of wrestling. So it was never the same before or after. And. Ted DiBiase, he's an ordained minister. He's a very kind man. He's like, he looks like a lion. He's a big he, bear. Yeah, of a he man. looks like a big bear of a man, and he. I just wanted he to hug him. He just, he just sits there and he'll chat. It was incredible, and I was like, I have a fear of rejection when it comes to speaking to people who are of note. Influential, yeah. Celebrities and things like that. I get very, but very nervous to talk to. He did it, and he cut it for us, and. That was awesome. That was awesome. That was cool. It was good, good meeting him. Yeah. So that was awesome. Right across from Ted DiBiase's booth was a, a local guy out here in PA that has a DeLorean. DeLore He's from Lancaster County. He has a DeLorean and it's set up like the time machine. And that was pretty, pretty cool. So at his booth, he was selling like just you know, like 80s and 90s toys. We were able to grab some stuff that he had in his booth that Paul doesn't have. No, which is rare because I have a, I have difficulty finding things from the Back to the Future line that I actually do not own. I can go to all these shows, yeah, I have that, yeah, I have that one, I have this one. I don't have this one, right. but this one I don't have, but it's way too expensive. These two pieces, uh, Johnny Lightning, these are from 1998. These are, you know, nice little pieces. Each one of them comes with a different trading card in them. They did these for a whole bunch of names. Lost in Space, Mustang Classics, Evil Knievel, Showstoppers, Muscle Cars USA, Speed Racer, Cartoon Network. Five bucks a piece for it. Yeah, and then he had the old McDonald's toys. So, so that's there's four. There's four in the collection we of McDonald's toys. get three. Like, look at that little, I don't know if you can see it. There's a the little Doc Brown. Vern's Junk Mobile, Doc in the DeLorean. Einstein in the train, and then there was one with Marty on the hoverboard. So here's the thing, for some reason, people love charging a premium for these right now. I'll look at these on eBay all the time, and I've always told myself I wanted to buy all people four sell them at like once. $20 a toy. $20 per toy, it's a lot of money. The guy wanted $1, $1 a piece. What was awesome was that he owns a very close to screen accurate Back to the Future 1 DeLorean, and he's not a now he let us go up and take pictures and videotape it. I Thank have, you for letting us do that. I have met a couple people that own DeLoreans. They're not very nice They're about it. They're not always the nicest people about it. They'll especially. let you go up to it unless you're if you're handing them a twenty dollar bill. Like, yeah, he had five bucks to sit in it. He let me film it, talk to me about it for a little while. Said it put, took him four years to put it together. I would love to do that someday. Imagine yeah. being in a position someday where we can own and drive a DeLorean to shows. Not that exciting of a concept. No, I just got really tired. We've been going since early this morning and it's almost three o'clock. There was a, a representative from Zolo World there walking around asking if people needed cases. So these were actually hard to find for about a year. I have a series two Hulk Hogan, the guy who does the bear hug version without a case. And this is specifically made for the Hasbro line of these WWF figures. Zolo World is the company that you want to go to to get these cases yeah, for these they're figures. they're nice cases. Like they're thick, they're heavy plastic and as you can see, they seal pretty well and they keep the card nice because right. they have like, here's the for the bubble mm -hmm. and they keep the card nice and flat. They were blowing these out for four bucks. Four dollars. Only is, needed one, which is which good. Which is a steal. But that's not all. Okay, so we say we've saved the best for last. The best for last. Wow, that was pretty good. I, that was pretty good. I did, okay, I'm excited. So, Je like we said, Jeff got this big, massive Hasbro toy. Paul. Paul now has all the Hogan's that he wants. I think he's missing one, which is cool. So now he's on the whole, well, I want to get series one. There were 12 wrestlers in series one Hasbro. Are we, are we going out I here? I think we opened Pandora's box. <laughs> yeah, sorry. You know how like I was doing good and I was like, all right, just give me everything that I can find Hogan. Now it's kind of like, give me everything that I can find. Series 80, one Hasbro wrestlers. And 80s and early 90s wrestling. So. 
He had, I want to say, five or six other Series 1. We didn't want to go too crazy, but we grabbed a couple. So I wanted to grab a couple more Series 1 Hasbro 1990 figures. So I grabbed Brutus the Barber Beefcake. I'm a Brutus the Barber Beefcake fan. Got that bad boy right there. Love Brutus. Hey, that's one. cool. And then Jake the Snake with Damien. Had this as a kid, had that one as a kid. Played with them like crazy, destroyed them. Now I got them back. Well, the, 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 the scissors. The shears, The yeah. shears are in there. They're yep. just in that they fell on the back. Now I can tell you that the Ultimate Warrior figures and the Macho Man figures from this line are going for amounts of money. They're really expensive because, unfortunately, we have lost Macho Man and Ultimate Warrior. So they are at a premium right now. You can never find loose Jake with his snake. With the snake, ever. 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 You can never find it. And if you do find the loose Jake with the snake, like once out of every 20 or 30 times that you see him, you're still gonna pay. You're paying a premium. Paying a premium. But that's not all. That's not all, that's more. So, for Kat's birthday, I purchased her the Blue Card Series 4 Undertaker. Kat is on a pretty awesome Undertaker kick. It's, it's kind of like her go-to old school wrestler. I myself, I'm a fan. I have Undertaker's glove coming up out of the ground with his tombstone that says buried alive. Undertaker's- Wait, you also have the urn. I do have the urn. I got Paul Bearer's urn tattooed right here. Wow, sometimes I forget. I don't. Undertaker's easily in my top five wrestlers from when I was a kid growing up. Around her birthday, I was gonna get her the Series 4, which I did. I had a thought to get another one from Jeff, but it just wasn't- Money is, is a bit of an issue sometimes. Right. However, not today. Madam decided to pull the trigger by her damn self. I did. This was a treat yourself moment. Series 7 Undertaker on the red card. So this is a rare Undertaker because it's cloth. His trench coat is cloth. This was not produced as much as the other action figures in well, the line. Well, what happens was is, is later on series, mm -hmm. they produce less and less figures, so right. they become more and more valuable. So this figure, and then there's also a mail away, and it doesn't come on card, it comes in a, in a factory sealed plastic, are the only two Undertakers that have uh, cloth trench coats. So if they're loose, you'll never be able to tell if it's from this series or if it's from the mail away. But right is an easy cool way to tell which series they're from once you get past i want to say series three and four series five six and seven they have different color cards there's red there's yellow there's blue there's green you could find a later series one two three kid figure on the green card which is really expensive and so is an atom bomb which they weren't ridiculously popular wrestlers but their toys in these lines are ridiculously expensive because not a ton of them were made. Kids played with them back in the 80s and 90s. Yeah, they opened them up and they, they bashed them. That's, I mean, that's what kids do. That's what they, they meant they, to do. They bash them. So this card is absolutely beautiful. I mean, there's like a little bit of like meh with the bubble, but that's to be expected. This is a, how old is this figure? 22 years. 1993. Yeah, and I love how they made up a move, the tombstone tackle. Yeah, it's the Tombstone Pile Driver. Right, he does a Tombstone, but they made up Tombstone Tackle, which is super funny. They have a Brett the Hitman Heart one, which we should keep an eye out for James. I got you. I don't ever really pull the trigger on expensive items, especially after I've hauled so hard. This is two years in the making. You realize this, right? You and I first... Rude. You and I... <laughs> we both said rude at the same time. Did we? Yeah. I didn't even hear you I saying. whispered it. We first started talking to each other right around RetroCon 2014, and... Look at this, it's RetroCon 2016 and we're about to get married in like a month and a half. I love you. I love you, this is awesome, this was cool. I had a great time, I'm glad we came. Thank you for pushing me to do this. This event is getting a giant thumbs up. You know who's getting a giant thumbs up? Noise Toys. Noise Toys. You're, you're specifically getting Ooh. a giant thumbs up. Josh from Zombie's Tale. Zo <laughs> Josh from Zombie's Tale or Toys, getting a thumbs up as always. Kate and Ed, you're getting a thumbs up. Right. Harry. Hey. Harry and Jether. I always want to say Harry and Jether. Harry and Jether? Jerry, Jerry and, and Heather. Heather from Retro. You get a giant thumbs up. You know, Ted DiBiase, you get a big thumbs up. Mike Farzetta, you get a giant thumbs up. Everybody gets a thumbs up. Christian Panther, you get a thumbs up. You get a thumbs up and you get a thumbs up. Yeah. This is this is a good thing. This was a pretty good thing. Um, do you think that we could stop at the King of Prussia Mall so that I could go to Lush and get my face washed because I'm out of it and I'm panicking? Yes, if we could stop somewhere in the food court and maybe grab something because I'm starving. Okay, let me text Jamie and see if she's working. Okay. Wah -ha -ha. Jamie, are you working? I'm just asking for a friend. All right, that about does it for RetroCon. Thank you for watching. We really appreciate you being here with us. If you aren't already, please subscribe. Hit the button down below. It helps us help you guys. 
Uh, if you can, share this video. Share them amongst your friends, your family, and your dogs. Because share I know for a fact that dogs watch comic trips. Right. Because I've seen proof. And also, you can always follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. We are at Comic Trips Tonight, everywhere. Out. We have a Patreon if you'd like to donate to our channel. All of the money goes back into our channel. And, uh, yeah. So I think it's time. Autobots. Roll out. Do it. Rolling out. We're playing with wrestling figures. We're gonna go to Lush. <laughs> we're in our twenties and thirties and we're playing with wrestling figures. We're That's gonna do okay. it. It's okay. Food court. Is there no orange Julius there? What?